So it's definitely better designed to put your CSS properties inside of a style tag, inside of the head tag of a page, rather than use style attributes throughout the rest of your source. But suppose you want to use some of the same CSS properties in multiple files. Rather than copy and paste those properties into those disparate HTML files, why not put them in one central .css file and then include that file in the multiple HTML pages, much like we put code in header files in order to include it across multiple programs in C. Let's take a look. Here in CSS2.html, I have a whole bunch of CSS properties that I'd like to factor out. So let's go ahead and highlight those, cut them out, and let's get rid of the style tags as well. Let's now move to this other tab that I've already called CSS2.css and paste in those CSS properties, saving the file. Let's now go back to CSS2.html and specify, still on the head, that we want to link to that CSS file somehow. Open bracket link href equals quote unquote css2.css. And then let's specify that the relationship of this link tag with the document is to serve as a style sheet. Link is what's known as an empty element, so we can open and close the tag in one single breath. Let's now save the file, change its permissions, and open it in a browser. Chamad A plus R CSS2.html. Enter. Let's now open up Chrome, HTTP colon slash slash localhost slash CSS2.html. Hmm, I do see John Harvard's homepage, but not any of the stylizations that I expected. Now, why might that be? Well, let's go back to the terminal window and take a look with ls. Let's go back here to gedit, and in the terminal window, type ls-l. It seems to be that CSS2.html is indeed readable by all, but notice I made a mistake. I did not similarly change the permissions on the .css file, so right now I, the file's owner, am the only one who can read or write it. So let's fix that as well with chmod, chmod a plus r css2.css. Let's now go back to Chrome and reload, and there is John Harvard's homepage.